The year is 1066, and there are three contenders for the English throne. One is Harold Godwinson, King of Wessex and the Saxons currently. Another is Harold Hadrada, the last true Viking King of Norway who desires the English throne. And the final one, William the Conqueror, Duke of Normandy, and as we all know, future King of England. But today we have the Viking invasion of England, and we have the final sort of true Viking invasion of England in 1066 as Harold Hedrada takes on Harold Godwinson at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. And as you can already see, it has got underway. We have some uh, Danelaw Huskals here slicing through these male thanes of Wessex here, killing these guys off pretty damn easily, that is for sure. But yeah, I guess these guys are supposed to represent the, like, the, the, the lone Viking that was stood on the bridge of Stamford Bridge. And uh, he actually took down like 20, 30 uh, like, Saxons before eventually someone uh, some uh, Saxons went under the bridge with a, uh, a little boat and then they actually piked him. Um, but he was a, apparently a giant Huskarl. And I guess these uh, Danelaw Huskarls are supposed to represent that. They are gold chevron. They're actually dying quicker than I thought they would. Uh, but yeah, they did a pretty good job. They probably should have got a charge off. That would have probably helped. And it's a shame they couldn't actually hold on the bridge itself. That would have made it a lot more cooler. But yes, we are back in Thrones of Britannia. It has been a while. And yes, I do enjoy this Total War. It's a, certainly a very underrated Total War. And uh, we are playing a historical battle here. And it is one of the greats of the uh, of the era, really. Like 1066, you have some big, big historical battles at the time. You've got the Battle of Fulford, which is a Viking victory. Then you have the Battle of Sam Bridge, which is uh, this one here. And then you have the Battle of Hastings. Uh, which is the final and the climax of like sort of like that that uh, year Like three big big battles at the side of English history But yes, it's great to be back in Thrones of Britannia and this was sent in by a uh, member of my discord and also a fellow creator uh, Magi of Fyam. I'll leave uh, the link for his channel in the description if you want to go and check that out. Uh, he did this along with uh, uh, Lionsburg, I believe who was uh, one of the uh, other creators and uh, participants, participants in this battle are sending in some Earl Stains now, just so you know. They get a bit of a charge off that time, that might help. But I imagine they're going to slice and dice this unit as well. These Earl Thanes are probably going to, yeah, yeah, lose them decisively. I mean, a triple gold Chevron Huskull, I expect no less than victory against these weak Saxons. They don't know how to fight, they don't want to die and go to Valhalla. It does of course, but yeah, I'll leave a link to both their uh, both their channels in the description, and I'd say a thank you very much for both of them for sending in this replay. It's very much appreciated. I think they're both sending from their perspective. I've got it from the uh, Saxon perspective. We have it from in this one. But they did also send in, uh, I think, the Viking perspective and also an alternate version um, in case this one broke. So they really, really did like cover all bases. Which is amazing, so thank you very much, guys. But yes, in this one, it looks like the numbers are not with the uh, the Vikings at all. But quality will hopefully come into it. I mean, if they've got as many chevrons as that, they've got a chance. They're also in a pretty good uh, defense position, in fact, as you can see over here. So yeah, these guys are set up. I mean, um, they seem like they have a lot of, like, levy. Well, not levy units, but, like, tier 1 units. they like, shield biters, uh, which actually are elites. Uh, one of the things that I didn't realize about Stamford Bridge um, was actually the Vikings left a lot of their armor, uh, like on the ships and in their camp, um, in, before they went into battle. So they actually were unarmored when they went into, most of them were unarmored when they went into the fight. Uh, so no surprise that they ended up losing, really. They set themselves at a pretty big disadvantage uh, in that case. It looks like they don't need their armor for this one. The big heavy axemen here doing all the heavy lifting. They really are slicing through these shields. Like they're made of paper mache. Already, the ground is being 
well fertilized with the blood of Saxon men. And I'm seeing archers coming up now. I think the uh, Saxons have finally had enough. And they're going to use uh, their feared archers here to try and get some volleys off onto those axemen. They are obviously a Huskar unit. They are pretty vulnerable to archer fire. Yeah, you can see they're already, already running out of, uh, already not having a, a good time being shot at. These guys can't protect themselves, even though they fairly should be safe when they're being shot at in the back. Look at all those shields on their back. Should be nice and safe there, but they're yeah, dropping to 100. Really should just leave them. Leave them to just fight. It's cool. I like this cool idea of just having like these guys go in and um, like be the, representing the, the brave Viking that fought on the bridge. And they're now actually fighting on the bridge, which is epic. Are they going to form like a diamond, like a triangle formation, then charge in again? Male Danes? I think this time they're going to get killed off. But yeah, there's so many submods being used this, in this one. Um, I think we've got like double size unit mod on as well. To try and get to the scale a little bit better. It looks awesome, it really does. I mean, 240 man units is huge. Look at that. Blood coming off these units. My gosh, it's awesome. Such a bloody fight on this bridge. It really is. S cut slash hack kill everyone that's not speaking Norse men. These damn Saxons cannot stay here. I mean, this used to be where this is being fought in uh, Sampa Bridge is in like uh, Yorkshire. Um, so actually, that used to be part of like the Viking, Viking like sort of um, Dane law. So this is right for Viking land in a way. Yeah, the Vikings in history were caught by surprise. They didn't expect Harold Godwinson to actually march so quickly north with an army. He had the, his men were forced march and were yeah managed to make the, the the journey in about I think ten days or something like that from like south all the way north. So uh, yeah, I think the Vikings were quite surprised that their landing was so quickly countered. But they did actually beat an army at Fulford. So we might do a battle of full for that'd be kind of cool to do. Dane Law Huskal's here losing. The male Danes, uh, yeah, they should cut these guys down now. And I think that's going to be finally the end of that uh, sort of like lone berserker that fought on the bridge. These guys are not going to hold much longer. These uh, Dane Law Huskals. Maybe they're going to try. Oh, maybe they shouldn't have pulled back there. That actually probably killed them off. Uh, we're going to see a shield biter now. It looks like go up and take over that job of defending the bridge. I don't know how good an idea this is, just sending one unit up piecemeal. Um, I mean, it, I guess it kind of works in favor of the Vikings. I don't know why they wouldn't just hold at this bridge, to be honest, because um, then they could like, use numbers against the uh, the, the Saxons. Uh, looks like we've got reinforcements over here as well that are coming to so Daniel Javelinman. Um, these are the guys and Daniel Spears. I think these are the troops that were left guarding the... The boats, they did arrive later on, and they did turn the tide a little bit in favor of the uh, Vikings later on. Um, but I don't know whether that should be a large force, really, um, to be honest. I feel like numbers-wise, they're just way too... It's like 3,000 men. It's going to be tough for the Vikings. But we'll see how it goes. But yeah, the shield biters just about managed to get to the foot of the bridge before the male Danes got there. And shield biters are basically like a low-tier berserker, so they should do a good amount of damage... They could go berserk. That is a, a, a possibility, which isn't the end of the world. These guys will then fight to the last man. But yes, if you want to see more Thrones of Britannia action and generally you just want to see more historical battles, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, guys. And feel free to leave a comment as well. I do like to uh, dedicate my channel to lots of historic battles, trying to recreate them. Hey, maybe one day we'll have every single battle in history covered on this channel. Who knows? Certainly got to get it through some big ones. And this is certainly, I'd say, in my opinion, one of them. It's also, funnily enough, quite close to where I live. Down the bridge. Um, it is quite a, quite a famous battle in my case, because it's quite near me. She'll bite us though. They're dying quickly. It seems like the Viking, uh, the, sorry, the um, Saxons are getting around the flanks. It looks like they're sending in their own lo uh, male long axemen here. You can see um, these guys with a big, heavy axe, kind of like the Huskars of the the Saxons. 
I think they do. The Saxons did have Huskars of their own. They call more like Housecars. But they did have their own. It's pretty cool. Funny enough, these guys will be fighting side by side in the ranks of the Varangian Guard after this, uh, after 1066, because like the Saxon nobility, like the House Guards, all left to go and uh, join the Byzantines' uh, personal bodyguard because they had no other place in England. We've got more Axemen now joining the fight here. Dane Laura Axemen going in. They're really going to try and hold up this bridge. I guess it's not a bad idea. I mean, the battle is called Battle of Stamford Bridge for a reason. I think you get archers up here and shoot into the flanks. They could do a lot of damage, actually, to the, uh, to the Vikings. There you go. Troops starting to break Earl Stains. Finally break him. There's still plenty to go in, though. Look at this army that is back here. I mean, there's rank upon rank of, uh, of Saxons. It's insane. As far as the eye can see, there is Saxon men ready to go in and die for their king. But these men are going to be needed for two different battles. They're going to be needed for this one and for Hastings. Men of, uh, well, we've got the men of Northumbria fighting here. I don't know why they didn't just use the Norse faction, but maybe they didn't fancy it. Like the Yom's Vikings would be a very cool unit to see. And I don't think Northumbria has them. Yeah, the Yom's Vikings would be a appropriate unit to have here fighting alongside Harold Hadrada. The battle goes on, the clashing here is slicing and dicing. The bodies are piling up. The shield biters still have 53 men. They haven't got Berserk yet either. I'm surprised. More units on the waiver down here. Male Thanes, yeah, more well male Thanes as well. 108 and they're wavering. The uh, male long axemen, they've only lost like 30 guys. Uh, casualties the same, wavering themselves apparently. Attacked in the rear? Are they? I don't know. That I feel sorry for these guys that are pinned by the uh, the bridge, though. That's unfortunate. Oh, and they uh, you can still fall down. Oh, that's unfortunate as well. Yeah, these guys are like getting pinned against the the bridge. Either it's like I don't know what well, you got nowhere to go. These fierce Vikings are going to keep cutting you down. I'm seeing a lot of breaking, uh, a lot of breaking Saxons. Running back home to their farms. Flee. I don't know if any of you have been watching Last Kingdom. Um, but there obviously has been like a new... I think it's like a film. I haven't actually watched it myself. I don't think it's a series. It's just a, a single film, isn't it? I think. I could be wrong. But uh, that's come out. It's like seven, uh, seven kings to, uh, to die or something. Doomed to die. It's called, but I'm really looking. I haven't, I need to watch that. I need to watch that. But I, obviously, I've been rewatching like Vikings and Last Kingdom a little bit. Got me really back into Thrones of Britannia. Back into the Viking total war. This, which is what it is. I really wish it kind of got like expanded and was just like the whole Viking world, not just uh, Britain. But I guess that's what you get when you get a, a, a creative assembly saga. It's only a saga. They yeah, need to send in more troops. He's uh, male long axemen. Yeah, look at that. Breaking 160 men. I'm going to need to send some more troops in. Uh, archers coming up, actually. And they will start to thin out the, the ranks here of the Vikings. Shield biters. They actually got two units of shield biters in there. Maybe they have abilities that scare units? Pro quite possibly. Looks like we're going to see the re-rally re troops go back in. These guys are all exhausted though. And uh, yeah, they need they need fresh troops. And the fresh troops are being sent up with Royal Thane. So they're sending in some elite snakes. Two units. Oh no, this is just a Thane. But one unit is a Royal Thane. Oh, and how did this unit get here? Did it sneak across? I think it might have. But the, uh, it's, I think the sacks... I, I, it's caught me unawares. The Saxons managed to sneak across the river. Somewhere else, another crossing point. I don't know if they're sending more troops in like they are. But yeah, I think this is a crossing point here as well, maybe. 
And they, they, they've used that and they've got a cross. And that's a fresh unit mailed Long Axeman. That is going to absolutely annihilate those, uh, those poor Dane Long Axeman that are waiting. Boom! Shield wall! Another awesome aspect of Thrones of Britannia really is. The shield wall. And look at that. The troops of Wessex, they're going to go smashing into these units. Dane Long Axeman, they're not great. They're really, really poor. They're not as good as some of the more elite troops we've already seen in the fight. Look at that, wavering already. They're losing decisively. I think they've been uh, battered already, these Dane Lore Axemen, by the, uh, the flank of the mailed Axemen. And there you go, yep, there you go. One unit broken. This one's going to try and get out of there. And not just like that, the defense at this bridge has been annihilated. The shield biters will fight on. These guys, I guess, can be the brave last stand of the Vikings on the bridge, but it's going to be futile. It really is. I wonder if the shield biters, yeah, they're, they're winning the Royal Thane. Shield biters out of control. I think that's, yeah, why they're, uh, yeah, look at that. They've been ignored and now they're, uh, have the, the Wessex is busy chasing down that final unit of Dane Laraxman. They don't want to deal with about 17 shield biters. We've got some rally Dane Laraxman as well. Yeah, it does not really matter. They get, they're going to just try and use them to slow down, I think, and save this to the unit. But the defensive cordon here that the uh, Vikings have set up, I guess it's to defend like the Viking camp is uh, ready to go. It's the next line of defense. We've got the Royal Huskals here. Harold Hadrada, who did die in battle historically, I guess. This could be him here, maybe. I don't know. That could be him. Uh, but Harold Hadrada did die in battle, as did his uh, brother Tostig. So and they were like the last great Vikings. There you go. Yeah, these uh, Danelor Axemen slowing down the mailed Axemen here of Wessex, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna have much success. And they'll route just as quickly as they rallied. And I think Shieldbiters routed as well. I thought they were unbreakable, but apparently not. They will, uh, they will actually break. I think Berserkers are fully unbreakable, but I could be wrong there as well, to be honest. But here we go, marching across. Now we have the entire Saxon army. And you could say that there's one or two of them. Imagine an artillery hit into this right now. That would be disgusting. Look at that. That is disgusting. A traffic jam and a half. And there's still more of them to get across. They're like, excuse me, coming through. Excuse me, coming through. And they're slowly getting off the other side as well. With some uh, pretty good order. Fully enough. Apparently these guys are shaken. Cav uh, oh, I guess casually sustained. Oh yeah, that's the male laxman. Yeah, no surprise that they are shaken. I was going to say, a unit already getting like off the off the bridge and they've taken casualties? What's happened? But uh, no, I think it's just that we one unit three rallied. Got a royal bodyguard there. Bodyguard, yeah, tier three. That'll be that'll be Harold himself. Obviously, the Saxon armies, you know, famously didn't really have cavalry. Uh, more of an age of infantry and shield walls. This is, but it's a dying age because it is swiftly defeated by the Norman knights, who then kind of bring in the more middle age and high medieval sort of style of fighting, which is obviously on horseback. This is going to be the last great hurrah of shield walls and Vikings. As, yeah, this is kind of like the age, the end of the Viking age. But yep, that reinforcement army still not yet moved. I don't know when they can they can start to move. Maybe when this army is engaged. I just don't feel like this is going to be enough to hitting power to break through. If they had like, um, I don't know, 10, 12 units here, maybe that would be useful. I feel like they could do with a full stack. Uh, I don't think they have a full stack. Looking at the numbers difference, um, I'm going to say that's a no. They could definitely do with it, because this extra troop thing could be very useful. And then that would actually, because apparently in history that did turn the uh, tide of the battle, I don't think those five units, especially with two of them being javelinmen, are going to change the tide of the battle on this flank at all. So really they need to, uh, they could have done with maybe adding a few more units there. I feel like this can hold for a long time though. 
Especially with the shield wall set up. But Danelaw archers, they're already saying, loosing some arrows onto the Saxon scum. Got militia for the archers. I mean, I just focused on the archers. The archers are the big danger for you. Uh, because your units like, yeah, the Royal Huskars here have got a bit of a worry. And also they could just shoot into the back of like the other sides. But look at this. Uh, this is awesome. Like this is all in like a, a crescent shape here. And they're all forming shield wall. Well, most of them are by like his Dane Lord Axeman, which they really need to. Go on, guys. Form shield wall like the rest. It looks awesome, though. God, this Total War is amazing. It really is. I don't know how people, like, have never played it or, like, never thought they wanted to play it. It's amazing. It really is. Like, if this, uh, this Total War had more, like, of a player base, it could be up there as one of the best. It really, like, looks amazing. Faction variation, yeah, it's a problem with unit variation. But my gosh, it looks good. And if you can create, like, thousands of men long line shield walls like this, it's insane. Why wouldn't you want to do that? I mean, it looks like... I hope the Saxons are going to do the same. It's going to take them a little bit of time, it looks like. Um, they're getting all their units together. We'll see um, how long it's going to take them. We'll fast forward a bit for now while we wait patiently. You can see all the stragglers coming off the bridge. Go on, you fatsos. Get to the front. We've got some killing of Vikings to do. I think that's it. Everyone else is off the bridge now. You can see, like, the remains... Of uh, the, the Viking defense here. I mean, there's a lot of dead Saxons. A lot more than uh, dead Saxons than there are dead Vikings. That's for sure. They took a fair share of them with them. Um, but yeah, and same over here, really. There's a lot of dead Saxons here. Dead and dying. But yeah, looks like the uh, Saxons basically are ready to go. Um, I mean, this is a huge, huge force here. I mean, I don't know how, what, how they hope to win this one, the Vikings. But they're going to need some... some uh, help, I don't know, from the gods like Thor and Odin. They're going to need some help from them. They're going to tie in their circle by the looks of it. Not a bad idea. Get the uh, archers inside the cordon as well, really. Reform your shield walls, men, as well. But here we go. It looks like the Saxons are coming in. If they go in waves, that'd be kind of cool. We'll give the Vikings a bit more of a chance as well. We'll see. Yeah, it's a fully enclosed circle now. And here you go. They form shield wall. Oh, it looks awesome. The only unit that can't form shield wall is the one in the center, led by Harald Hadrada. As well, Huskarls. There you go, the archers firing over the top of the shield wall. Of course, the Saxons keep their heads down. I mean, they've got things like Thane Spearman. They're not going to break through. They're not going to break through the sword hearse here and the more stern units here. Dane Loraxman, they might, might break through here. This is probably the weak spot, the Dane Loraxman. Danelaw Spears as well in the back actually might be a bit of a problem. Basically, anywhere there's no da where there's Danelaw infantry, you probably don't want to be... Uh, you, you probably want to fight there. Fighting the Sword Hearse is probably going to be pretty nasty. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, archers need to be careful. They're going through the lines here. Come on, guys. A, you're breaking the shield wall up, but also you're really risking your own necks here. But hopefully these guys are getting a move on because they need to because their uh, the comrades are doomed. Where are the archers going? How do they get out of this cordon and not be punished? Well, some of them have been. I can see like <laughs> one brave one brave arch here trying to take on the entire Saxon army. He died. They're gonna space up the Huskars. Not a bad idea. Hopefully they just don't shoot them. I think just just leave. I think now it's not an archer contest. It's now as an infantry fight, but my gosh. I mean, look at this. If we can take it from a... Look at that. It's almost a full encirclement. It really does look awesome. I think they're not quite engaged yet. They're busy cheering and shouting at each other. You can see over the, like, the top of your shield. All you can see is a solid line of shields ahead of you. Put your brave faces on, men. We're going into battle soon. You best have sharpened your axes at the front here, boys. You may be sitting ducks. That's true. But it's okay. Hopefully those big axemen will pierce through that front line. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try and fully encircle them and then they're going in. Which is pretty epic, to be fair. 
make sure there's no reserves for the, uh, vi the Vikings available. The only reserves are these ones, and they are moving now. The reinforcements are on the way. Though, like I said, I feel like this is not enough. And they're not good stuff. It's Daniel Spears. It's not exactly gonna do a lot, I feel like. They needed, they need some, like, Yom's Vikings and Berserkers. They need, like, the good stuff. But I guess I mean, they are Danelaw's units. I mean, these Danelaw Axemen and Danelaw Spears, yeah, they're all unarmored. So, again, it kind of keeps the history that they, they didn't have armor at this point. I thought they were going to charge in there, the Thanes. I really were hoping they were going to. Here we go. I mean, it's got to be happening any minute now. It's got to happen any minute now. I don't think this is how it was, though. I don't think that the Vikings were surrounded as such. It kind of just turned into a bit of a scrappy battle on, uh, like, over the bridge. They stormed across the bridge and they kind of just did a battle and then they got outflanked. I don't think they ever got encircled, though. But the uh, Viking army was almost wiped out, like, to a man. So, this, this is the recipe certainly to wipe out a, an army to a man, that is for sure, surrounding it. Um, so, I guess it's loose historicalness to it. But here we go, oh my gosh. In they all go. I think I don't know if they're going to run or they're running in after. If they've got attack orders have been given, they've all slammed on in. Maybe they all, I think they all got attack orders to attack Hadrada, but they've got to get through the shield wall first. But my gosh, how will the Vikings do? Can they hold? The cheering and the jeering has ended and now it's the real battle cries have begun and the screams of the dying and the dead actually the dead aren't screaming that's for sure looks like the Dane Loraxman are already losing though pretty decisively that is not a good sign like I said I did think this could be a bit of a problem I mean, they shoved up some units in particular, but I feel like they should have shoved up these guys as well. Made them a bit more of a stern fight. Because they're fighting guys like Royal Thanes, they're screwed. Yeah, these uh, Danel, Danel units at the back here are not looking too good. They're fighting much more heavily armored foes. And it does not look like they're going to break through. Um, like, or hold their ground. They, there's no way they can do any breaking through. They can't push anywhere. It's hold and just pray. It looks like uh, the Royal Huskars are already getting sent in. And they are getting shot at. Ah, oh, come on. Wessex, this is poor. Just let just let, the, just let Hadrada fight and die. Let him go and die in Valhalla. Like, you've got so many more men. Here he goes. In he goes. Kill every last one of those dirty Saxons. Time for death, or Valhalla. Well, could be both in fact, I guess. Death and Valhalla. Yeah, I mean, this unit's getting shot already to pieces. This is not, a, not cool. Not cool. Just let this unit just fight this out. Like, they're going to break through in a moment. Uh, the uh, Wessex. Wessex can break through here. But it looks like they're going to try and kill every last one of these damn Vikings before they go in. The archers might need to go into combat, but they're not going to exactly slow down the, uh, the attack. Dane Loraxman here wavering. The Sword Hurst here are holding well. They're holding really well. And I expect to know less. These guys are pretty elite. Here come the reinforcements, though. If these guys can slam into the back of the... Um, of the, like, Wessex here, then they can do a lot of damage. They're actually going to... Javi, these feared archers, not a bad idea, but yeah, Wessex already sending over some reinforcements, including the Royal Bodyguard here. They're getting sent over. Yeah, reinforcements already being, like, pulled out. Like, they are slowing their attack on this side here, in fact. And here we go, more breaking through going on. I don't know whether they're going to break, try and, like, take advantage and press their advantage and just destroy the circle. We'll see. Royal Huskar's already losing. Like these guys are getting butchered. I think it's because they're getting focused down. 
Uh, there we go, yeah, they've been given attack orders. I think they're just kind of ignoring the Hadrada's bodyguard right now. Which is fine, because they'll just get free kills. They'll kill a lot of guys from doing that then. Yeah, those Royal Huskiles fighting in there against the Huskiles of Hadrada's bodyguard. Yeah, but these guys, funnily enough, will be fighting together once they uh, both sign an agreement with the Byzantine Emperor. I swear fealty. It looks like, yeah, Hydrada is kind of... I'm going to turn that around, but it does not matter because the back is fully just been destroyed. And now the Sword Herse, who have held so well, can just be sliced and diced by things like Mailed uh, Axemen over here. Hold the line! It's a shame you can't like form a second shield wall and just like have, have like almost like a well, it'd be more like a square really. Form like a square, like square men, square. We're surrounded. Yeah, it's not looking good. These Vikings should thought their rear was secure. Oh, they were wrong. The reinforcements, by the way, have been fully engaged. They were not even to get, able to get a rear charge off from the troops. Attacking their reinforcement, uh, like attacking their comrades. And yeah, these uh, unarmored spearmen, they're not really going to break through. They're losing decisively, combat even. Losing decisively. Sword Herse, uh, yeah, they're, they're getting some chevrons. That one's got silver chevron. I think uh, also there's been a bit of a win here. Huskars have actually won. They don't want to engage that long axeman. They're going to charge this royal Huskar here though. That's brave from Harold Hadrada. If he gets a good charge off, he could, I guess, turn this one in his favor. Keep slicing and dicing the boys, but here comes the, yeah, the long axeman. The enemy, general is dead. enemy general is dead, and there you go. Harold Hadrada has been cut down, and presumably his brother Tostig is also dead. And that will be the end of today's Battle of Stamford Bridge. The uh, Viking army will be routed with the news of Harad Hadrada, their king, dead, slain on the field of battle. And there you go, a close victory for Wessex and for Harold Godwinson. It wasn't, I think it kind of was, I guess you could probably say a close victory in history. Maybe more of a, uh, a clear victory or something like that, maybe. Unarmored and uh, out, outnumbered. Uh, and really outmatched. The Vikings didn't stand a chance really in history. Um, and they kind of did that again in in uh, in this replay. I feel like maybe could have maybe put it a little bit more in favor of the Vikings, giving them a large reinforcement army or just better troops to hold that final cordon. Um, but they did go very much down the historical route, um, which I do appreciate. And I think they did actually all right. 3,000 kills. They didn't do bad. Um, nearly as many kills as the... Uh, as uh, the Saxons got. But yeah, well done to Cyrus, who was playing as Wessex. Uh, he now has to march south with his army of uh, Saxons to deal with uh, William the Conqueror, as he'll be later known to be. Unlucky to Lionsburg, who was uh, playing as Northumbria, or like the Viking uh, army of Harold Hadrada. Um, both did a pretty good job. We'll look at some of the kills. Harold Hadrada's bodyguard got 694 kills. My gosh, what a good kill. Uh, feed that is 248 kills for this uh, sword herse here and 223 with another one they did very well um dane law axe i'm getting 119 kills then we've got shield biters 101 201 and then we've got the dane law huskals 343 kills yeah some of these units did insane i mean that the huskal and then how to draw is like royal huskals here or like yeah got like a thousand kills between them and then we've got javis here 143 kills archers 108 kills 128 with another Javi. Then we have Cyrus's uh, Saxons, 103 kills with the Select Feared Spearman. 164 with another Spearman there. Uh, 219 with the Earl Spearman. 314 with this, um, what's the unit says? I don't even recognize the unit cards very well. I think this is Earl's, uh, Earl's Thane, sorry. Um, then we've got Royal Thane's here, 161 kills. 260 kills and still healthy. That's the problem with some of these units. I think they ran units down. Um, so they got like maximum kills. 308 with the Royal Huskars there. And then 103 with some select beard archers. But there you go guys. That is today's battle. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, do remember to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new around here. And leave a comment as well if you've enjoyed some Thrones of Britannia action. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.